welcome at Jax London. Uh, I'm here with Alex Soto from Red Hat. Oh. Hi, Alex. Yeah, we would like to talk about Quarkus, a quite new framework out there in the Java world. Perhaps just could you explain what is Quarkus? What are the characteristics of the framework? Yeah, um, well, Quarkus is a new open source project. This is important to notice that it's just sponsored by Red Hat, but it's, it's yeah. Apache uh, version 2 uh, license, so you are free to use. And basically, we are trying, or we are doing, to um, or improving the Java um, development experience in two ways. The first one is when you want to deploy your Java application into uh, container world, Docker, Kubernetes, for example, or in the serverless or function as a service um, architectures, where basically you are facing is the problem of memory usage and CPU usage. If you are into let's say plain java application using any of the what we call traditional cloud native java stack mm -hmm. then you are, can get in really in trouble when in, when you're trying to use this application as a as a function or as a, into a serverless because with serverless you really need a fast boot up time and mm, you know stop time and also you you need to have really low uh, memory and CPU requirements. Mm -hmm. This is something that if you are using Java, you cannot uh, get it because you need to load all the JVM and then put at top your um, application with all the framework and so on. And if you are not into serverless but into the Kubernetes, then you've got another problem is that Kubernetes uses containers and running Java inside container is always problematic mm -hmm. in terms of um, memory usage and CPU usage as well. And if you are using some kind of old versions of Java and thinking on Java 8, then you can really get in trouble because uh, Java 8 don't know that he's running inside a container. Mm -hmm. He thinks that it's running in a bare metal and he tries to grab as much memory as possible. And the problem is that the uh, kernel, which manages all the in containers, when he sees that some of the process goes out of his boundaries, it just kill the container. So this means that if you are use, just using plain Java and Java 8, you also have problems when you are running your applications in Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do with Quarkus is improve this. And the truth is that this improvement happens because of Quarkus, but also because of GraalVM, which is an Oracle uh, project which is there is the community version and the enterprise uh, version. We are providing support for both. Mm -hmm. What exactly is the role yeah. of Graal VM here? In exactly. The and what Graal VM uh, does in this um, case is just taking your Java code and compiling into a native code. This means that you get it like, for example, other languages like Go or, for example, uh, Node.js, any of these applications that can run natively. Mm -hmm. Then using Graal VM and Quarkus, you get this uh, fast boot up time, low memory usage. You can think that, for example, uh, if you compare um, traditional cloud native uh, Java application, you need like 200 megabytes of RAM, mm -hmm. right? Meanwhile, with Quarkus, you just, Quarkus in native, you just need 15. Mm -hmm. So it's really improvement in terms of, of memory, right? Mm -hmm. And since it's native, um, you know, you don't have all the problems related of JVM running inside the container because at the end this is a native file, native executable that it's you know native to the platform, in this case to the Docker container. So the first thing that we are moving is to improve this, in this part of deploying to Kubernetes or serverless world. The second thing is um, making developers' life easier. In which sense, in just providing integrations with uh, well-known um, libraries and specifications, for example, JAXRS, JPA, Bean validation, or the Eclipse microprofile specs. So we're providing, not reinventing the wheel, the wheel of you know creating new annotations or creating new libraries, but just reusing what's out there and providing support for these uh, um, new libraries to get able to be compiled as a native executable. But also, we're providing one of the really nice features that other languages have, which is called uh, Live Reloading or Dev mm -hmm. Mode, which allows you to go to your ID, um, change the code, save the file, and it's automatically deplo deployed again 
to your running instance. Mm -hmm. So usually when you are using uh, Java in your traditional um, stack, what you're doing is something like, I do modification, I save the file, I stop the current instance, I do, for example, Maven clean package, I create a new artifact, and then I boot it again, for example, doing Java minus Java, blah, 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 and then it boots again, and then you manually can check if the changes that you were expecting were done correctly or not. With Parkos, you don't, don't need to do any of these things. You just can go save the file, and automatically, it's your change is reflected to your running instance. This means that instead of spending 30 seconds for change if the change has been done or not, it just takes one second. It's, it's like the, the development experience of, of script languages. Like Ex exactly. I mean, that I know that uh, um, users from Node for mm -hmm. JavaScript, they already have this kind of tools, yeah, yeah. right? But this is something really new for the Java ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Quarkers, you already mentioned it's not only a Red Hat project. Who's behind it? What, what's the community? Who's developing the project? Well, basically it's Red Hat now, mm -hmm. but we are start receiving a lot of pull requests from people outside Red Hat for adding support for any new technology that they would like to um, have um, support in inside Quarkus. For example, um, I know that Bolt from HashiCorp Mm -hmm. is an extension that is coming from the community, not from Red Hat. Also, there is a support for um, MongoDB and Panache, which is, Panache is a framework for dealing with persistence in Quarkus. Then, then there is someone from outside that is also helping on creating the same experience that you have in JPA, but with MongoDB, mm -hmm. for example. So, I mean, that now we are start getting some traction. Mm -hmm. it's a, I mean, it's a fairly new project in the sense that maybe it has like almost one year, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that has been public almost one year ago. So it's pretty new mm -hmm. and we are getting traction of people that are really interested on using Quarkus. Mm -hmm. How would you say is, it, is it the current state? Is it production ready already? Is it? Yeah, it's, um, this is always the problem with, uh, let's say, enterprises and open source, right? Mm -hmm. For, from the point of view of enterprises, they need they say, okay, if there is no 1.0, it's not production ready. Mm -hmm. And from the point of view of open source, it's like every version is ready, right? So it's just, the version is just a number. Mm -hmm. So currently we are 0 0.23.2, this is the current version. Mm -hmm. And we know a lot of people who is already using it in production. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, but um, I mean, that in the sense that 0 0.23 is just a number. About 1.0, that is, you know, one, one of the most questions that all the attendees of my talks ask me. <laughs> it seems that by the end of this year, we're going to have mm -hmm. a 1.0. But, you know, it's an, as usually it's an open source project and it can be by the end of this year or by the beginning of the next year. Or, mm. yeah. I didn't ask the question, but good yeah. that you answered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a 1.0. Yeah, there will be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and it's, in fact, it's planned. Yeah. That one, one dot zero, but you know, it's like it can be this or not. We we also don't want to announce like a you know a, a hard deadline because mm -hmm. if we find any problem, because sometimes you, you get it some problems or some regressions, um, basically because um, Oracle is also releasing new RAL VM versions, mm -hmm. which if we want to make them compatible with Quarkus, sometimes we introduce some regressions that need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, like for the reason we want to be sure that it's you know a good piece mm -hmm. of of software, or at least that can you know, have a long term life, mm -hmm. so you don't have to be updated regularly because of new RAL VM version or a new regression uh, detected. But mm -hmm. as I said, there is uh, or we know companies that are using Quarkus in production. Mm -hmm. Uh, perhaps uh, at the end, an advice, how, how can people out there um, start with Quarkers? Yeah, I mean, that there are several ways. Mm -hmm. The first um, way could be that I wrote an article for Jack's magazine. Mm -hmm. That is an introduction of, of Quarkus. Also, I wrote for Jack's the Quarkus cheat sheet, mm -hmm. which if you already have an overview of the technology, you can go to the cheat sheet and see all the, the things that you can do. And also then, I mean, that if you want to just start coding, you can go to code.quarkus.io and then you get it some, let's say, 
dashboard when you put the group ID, the artifact, the extension that you want to use, you do a generate, and then it generates the zip file with all the code, so you can start coding uh, real easy. Of mm -hmm. course, right. Quarkus.io has some guides, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and currently we are also working in a book about, okay. about Quarkus. Mm -hmm. But it's not published, so this is not. Let's say that in it's progress. a resource mm. for the future, but not for for just right now. Mm. So okay, very interesting project. Thank you very much for the insights, Alex. Thank you very much. Have fun at the conference. Sure. And thank you for watching. Thank you.